Hi, I'm Tracy Anwemana. I am a hematologist and I specialize in disorders of hemostasis and thrombosis, disordered bleeding and clotting. And I am here to talk to you today about the lupus anticoagulant panel. So I have previously made a video about the lupus anticoagulant panel and you can check it out. But today I'm just going to talk you through the lupus anticoagulant panel. The lupus anticoagulant panel is essentially a mixing study. That's all it is. It is one big mixing study. Okay. And you are looking for an inhibitor that does not correct with mix. I'm going to say that again. A lupus anticoagulant is present when there is an inhibitor that does not correct with mix and it is phospholipid dependent. Okay, I told you three things. Let's review those three things. Number one, a phospholipid dependent clotting assay is prolonged. Okay, so let me break that down. Any clotting assay that depends on, a pho on phospholipids being present, so that's typically the PTT, the dilute Russell Viper Venom <laughs> test, or the hex phase, ooh, I'm getting deep now, or the platelet neutralization panel. Those are all phospholipid dependent tests. Okay, so we're usually familiar with the PTT. The PTT is prolonged, it's a phospholipid dependent test, that is the first step in establishing a lupus anticoagulant is present. Now, sometimes people will tell me, well, the PTT is normal, so the person can't possibly have a lupus anticoagulant. Okay, it is possible to have a lupus anticoagulant with a normal PTT. And that's because a normal PTT is not sensitive enough to some lupus anticoagulants. And so if your level of suspicion is high, you do want to do the full lupus anticoagulant panel. You just don't want to look at the PTT and say, well, it's normal. Therefore, the patient has no lupus anticoagulant. Okay. And what are some more of those sensitive PTTs? There's a lupus anticoagulant sensitive LAPTT. Okay. And that is one test that you can do to have a sense of whether there is a prolonged phospholipid dependent test or not. But the other sensitive tests are the hex phase phospholipid assay or the PMP. That's the platelet neutralization panel. Okay. In general, we start with the PTT. Okay. And if the PTT is prolonged, that's phase one. Or if any phospholipid dependent test is prolonged, that is step one in proving that you have a lupus anticoagulant. Okay. Step two in proving that you have a lupus anticoagulant is that the lupus anticoagulant or the prolonged PTT or the prolonged phospholipid dependent test does not correct with mix. So the prolonged phospholipid dependent test does not correct with mix. It does not correct with mix. So that means there's an inhibitor. We talked last time about mixing studies. Okay. Inhibitor is present when you mix the samples together and it does not correct with mix. Okay. That is step two. Step one, a phospholipid dependent test is prolonged. Step two, it does not correct with mix. Step three is that there is phospholipid dependence. What does that mean? It means if you add phospholipids to the sample, it corrects the prolongation. Okay. And how do you know it's corrected? You take the sample before you add the phospholipids, and then you take the sample after you add the phospholipids, and you divide them to check the ratio. Okay, so if the ratio is about one or less than one, then that's a sign that it is not phospholipid dependent because one sample is pretty much the same as the next sample as far as the clotting time. If, however, the prolongation is phospholipid dependent, what will happen when you add the phospholipids is that you will normalize the test. So when you go to divide the pre-sample by the post-sample, there'll be a pretty significant difference. It'll be much greater than one. Typically that number is 1.2. And if that number is greater than 1.2, then you've satisfied the third criterion. And then it is likely that a lupus anticoagulant is present. Okay, three criteria to establish lupus anticoagulant is present. Number one, a phospholipid dependent test is prolonged. Number two, the phospholipid dependent test does not correct with mix. Number three, the test, the abnormality, the prolonged clotting assay corrects when phospholipids are added to the sample. Those are your three criteria to establish that a lupus anticoagulant is present. All right, thanks for watching today, and I'll see you next time.